Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about related rates and motion problems. So in the previous video, we talked about the fundamentals of related rates problems, and we also had a four-step process on how to solve related rates problems. So in this video, we're going to continue solving application problems from business, economic, social science, life science, and physical sciences using related rates. So we're going to use what we learned in the previous video about related rates problems, and now we're going to talk about how are the related rates of increase or decrease of two quantities, and also consider familiar situations in which the two quantities are measuring the distances and the two rates are velocities. So let's talk about example six, related rates and motion. Suppose that a 25 foot ladder is leaning against a vertical wall of a house. If the bottom end of the ladder begins to slide away from the wall at a rate of 1.5 feet per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the foot of the ladder is seven feet from the wall? So let's start with a picture that illustrates what's happening in the problem. So you have this wall or this building, you have a ladder that's leaning up against the building. The ladder is always 25 feet long. It does not change. You also have the height that the ladder reaches up the building. And you also have this distance from the base of the ladder to the base of the building. So as the ladder falls or slides down the wall, it's actually going to slide out from the base of the wall as well. So there's a couple things that are changing in this problem. Distances. The distance from the building to the base of the ladder and the top of the ladder to the base of the building. So let's let x represent the distance from the building to the base of the ladder in feet. So this x is representing the horizontal distance from the base of the ladder to the building. And in this problem, since the ladder is sliding down, x will be increasing. Let y represent the distance from the ground to the top of the ladder. So y is the vertical distance from the top of the ladder to the ground or the base of the building. And y will be decreasing because the ladder is sliding down. So remember, that's the first step in solving related rates problems, is that you draw a picture to illustrate what's happening in the problem, and you write down all the variables that are changing in the problem. And now we're ready to find out what is the equation that relates all the variables in the problem together using a geometric formula. So we have x that's representing this side of a triangle between the ladder, the building, and the ground. You also have y that's representing this side of the triangle, and the base of the building and the ground forms a right angle. So we're talking about a right triangle, and the distances of three sides of the right triangle are related by using the Pythagorean theorem. So just to remind us what the Pythagorean theorem says, Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. It says that the hypotenuse length squared, so 25 squared, is equal to the other side's squared lengths when you add them. So you have x squared, the square of one side length, plus the other side length squared, so y squared, is equal to the hypotenuse length squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. Or if you simplify, x squared plus y squared equals 625. And it's also important to figure out what is the given information in the problem. So the ladder is always 25 foot. That's not changing. So we don't need a variable to represent the hypotenuse of the right triangle. It's always 25 feet. Notice in this last sentence that they're telling us that the ladder is 7 feet from the wall. So that's telling us information about x. So when x is 7 feet, we need to figure out what is the y. So when the ladder is 7 feet from the base of the wall, how far up the wall is the ladder? So let's use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what y is. So if x is 7 feet, and we have the Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals 625, plug in x equals 7 and figure out what y is by solving for y. So you have 7 squared plus y squared equals 625, or 49 plus y squared equals 625. Subtract 49 on both sides of the equation to get y squared by itself. So y squared equals 576. And then if you take the square root on both sides of the equation, you'll have y equals 24 feet. So when the base of the ladder is 7 feet from the wall, the top of the ladder is 24 feet above the ground. Now let's talk about the other given information in the problem. They tell us that the ladder is sliding away from the wall at a rate, so that's a derivative, x prime is 1.5 feet per second. So that distance, the horizontal distance, is increasing 1.5 feet for every second. And they ask us in the problem, Find out how fast is the ladder sliding down the wall, so that's y prime or dy dt, when x is equal to 7 feet. So we have the equation and the given information from the second step of the related rates problem. Now the third step. Use implicit differentiation to take the derivative with respect to time t on both sides of the equation from the Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem said we had x squared plus y squared equals 625. Take the derivative of the left side of the equation with respect to t, so derivative of x squared plus y squared and the derivative of the right side of the equation with respect to t of 625. Now again, x and y are changing based on time. So they're functions of time. So whenever you take the derivative, you have to multiply by the chain rule, x prime when you take the derivative of an x, 
or you have to multiply by y prime when you take the derivative of y. So the derivative of x squared is the derivative of the outside function, 2x, times the derivative of the inside function by the chain rule, so d dt of x, because x is the inside function, and same thing for y squared. y squared is the outside function, its derivative is 2y, times the derivative of the inside function, d dt of y. And the derivative of the other side of the equation, derivative of 625, is a constant, so the derivative is 0. So now we need to take a couple of derivatives. What's the derivative of x with respect to t? It's x prime. And the derivative of y with respect to t is y prime. So we have the equation 2 times x times x prime plus 2 times y times y prime equals 0. So now you can either plug in the information given in the problem or you can solve for y prime because we're trying to find y prime when x is equal to 7 feet. So let's take this equation and solve for y prime this time. So if you want to solve for y prime, move the 2x times x prime to the other side of the equation by subtracting. So 2y times y prime on the left side of the equation equals negative 2x times x prime on the right side of the equation. And now if you want to get y prime by itself and you're multiplying by 2y, divide both sides of the equation by 2y. So 2y divided by 2y on the left side, that will cancel out or simplify to 1. So you'll be left with y prime on the left side of the equation. And the right side of the equation would be negative 2x times x prime and then also divide by 2y on the right side. So if you simplify the right side of the equation, you'll get y prime is equal to negative x times x prime divided by y after the 2's cancel out. What's the advantage of solving for y prime in this problem is that now we can plug in the information for x, x prime, and y, and we won't have to solve for y prime. It's already been solved for. So substituting the values, x prime is 1.5. The base of the ladder was sliding out from the wall, so that distance is increasing 1.5 feet per second. The x is 7 feet in the problem, and we found out that if x is 7, y must have been 24 feet. The distance from the top of the ladder to the ground level must have been 24 feet when x was 7 feet. So we need all this information because we need x, we need x prime, and we need a y to figure out what y prime is. So when you plug that information in, you'll get y prime is equal to the opposite of 7 for x times 1.5 for x prime divided by 24 for y. And when you type this into a calculator, you'll have approximately negative 0.44 when you round the two decimal places. Since y prime is measuring a rate of change, this is negative 0.44 feet per second. So what that means is that the ladder is sliding down the wall at this rate, about negative 0.44 feet for every second. Okay, let's try a different problem. Example 7, related rates and motion again. But this time we're going to be talking about a rectangle. The length of a 12 foot by 8 foot rectangle is increasing at a rate of 3 feet per second and the width is decreasing at a rate of 2 feet per second. So again, let's start with a diagram or a picture. This time it's a rectangle. So you have a rectangle that is starting at 12 feet by 8 feet. So the length is 12 feet, the width is 8 feet. And now they're telling us that the distances are increasing or decreasing. The length is increasing at a rate of 3 feet per second. So this length is increasing, so it's getting longer. 3 feet for every second, but the width is decreasing at a rate of 2 feet per second. So this width is decreasing. So the rectangle is getting wider, but the height is decreasing for the rectangle. So there are several things in this problem that are changing. The width is changing, so we need a variable for that. So let w be the width of the rectangle in feet. The length is changing, so let l be the length of the rectangle in feet. And in this problem, we'll be talking about the perimeter and the area of the rectangle. So let P be the perimeter of the rectangle in feet, and let capital A be the area of a rectangle in feet squared. So let's remind ourselves what the formulas are for perimeter and area of a rectangle. The perimeter of a rectangle is you add up all the sides. So that would be perimeter is two widths and two lengths. So 2W plus 2L is the perimeter. And area of a rectangle is length times width, or capital A is L times W. So part one, how fast is the perimeter of the rectangle changing when it was 12 feet by 8 feet and the length is increasing and the width is decreasing? What is the perimeter doing at that time? So we've already talked about step one, the diagram or the picture and the variables that are changing the problem. And we also have formulas that can be used when we actually take the derivative. Now let's write out what is the given information in the problem for step two. So L prime is how fast is the length changing? So the length is changing based on time, so it's a function of time dl dt is, it's increasing, so it's positive 3 feet per second. However, the width was decreasing as a function of time. So the derivative of width, w prime, is the derivative of w with respect to time t, 
the width was decreasing, so it's negative 2 feet per second. So now we're ready for the next step. Use implicit differentiation to take the derivative on both sides of the equation with respect to t. Since we're talking about perimeter, we'll be using the equation for perimeter. So take the derivative on the left side of the equation and take the derivative of the right side of the equation with respect to time t. So p equals 2w plus 2l. The derivative of the left side with respect to t, so that would be derivative of p. The derivative of the right side of the equation with respect to t would be derivative of 2w and 2l. Keep in mind that w and l are functions of time. So that means anytime you take the derivative of l, you have to multiply by l prime. Anytime you take the derivative of w, you have to multiply by w prime. So the left side of the equation, the derivative of p is 1 times the derivative of the inside function, that's p prime. The derivative of the right side of the equation, the derivative of 2w, that's just 2, that's the derivative of the outside function. The derivative of the inside function would be w prime, because w is a function. Plus, same reason, derivative of 2l would be 2, and the derivative of the inside function would be l prime, using the chain rule. And so this is the equation that we have. This tells us that the perimeter is changing based on how fast the width and the length are changing. So substitute in the value. L prime is 3 because the length was increasing by 3 feet per second. And plug in W prime is negative 2 because the width was decreasing by 2 feet per second into this equation. And so when you do that, you'll have P prime is 2 times W prime, that's 2 times negative 2, plus 2 times L prime, that's 2 times 3. And when you simplify, you'll get 2 feet per second. So what this means is that when the length is increasing by 3 feet per second and the width is decreasing by 2 feet per second, how fast is the perimeter changing? It's 2 feet per second. Now part 2. How fast is the area of the rectangle changing? So we're still talking about the same rectangle. It was 12 feet in length and 8 feet for the width. And we also have the length is increasing by 3 feet per second and the width is decreasing by 2 feet per second. This time we're talking about how fast is the area changing. So we're talking about A prime. So we need to use the area formula, A equals length times width or L times W, and now use implicit differentiation to take the derivative with respect to time on both sides of the equation. So if A equals L times W, L is a function of time, W is a function of time. So you have two functions multiplied together here. You have to use the product rule. So the left side of the equation, derivative of A is A prime, the derivative of the right side of the equation, use the product rule. So first function stays the same, so that's L, times the derivative with respect to time of the second function, which is W, plus the second function unchanged, times the derivative of the first function, so DDT of L. So after you take the derivatives, you'll have A prime is L times W prime plus W times L prime, after you use the chain rule. So notice, if you want to find out how fast the area changes, you need to know L, w prime, w, and l prime. So you need to know the length, the width, how fast the length is changing, and how fast the width is changing. So we need to substitute in all the values. Substitute in the value l prime is 3. The length was increasing by 3 feet per second. Substitute in w prime is negative 2. The width was decreasing by 2 feet per second. The length of the rectangle was originally 12 feet, and the width of the rectangle was originally 8 feet. So when you substitute all this information in, a prime is 3 times 8, plus negative 2 times 12, which, if you simplify, gives you 0. So that means the area is not changing at all. A prime is 0 feet squared per second. The units are feet squared because we're talking about how fast the area changes. So area is feet squared, and this is changing based on time, so it's per second. In the next example, we're going to use the idea of related rates to determine how fast a point is moving in a certain direction along the graph of a curve. So both x-coordinate and the y-coordinate will be functions of time. So example 8, related rates and motion problem again. A point is moving on the graph of x cubed plus y cubed equals 9 times xy. When the point is at the point 2 comma 4, the y-coordinate is decreasing at a rate of 3 units per second. How fast is the x-coordinate changing at this moment? So to give you an idea of what this equation's graph looks like, it's this curve. It's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. So this is an implicit equation that you cannot solve this equation for y very easily or it may be impossible. So you have this point 2 comma 4 on the graph. The x coordinate is 2 and the y coordinate is 4. So whenever this point is moving along the curve, at this point 2 comma 4, how fast is the x coordinate changing and how fast is the y coordinate changing? So the x coordinate and the y coordinate are going to be functions because as time passes, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are changing. So x is x of t in the context of this problem, and y is y of t. So what information is given in the problem? 
They tell us that the x-coordinate is 2, the y-coordinate is 4, so x is 2, y is 4, and the y-coordinate is decreasing at a rate of 3 units per second. So y prime is talking about the rate of y changing. So y prime, it's decreasing. So y prime is negative 3 units per second. So that's the first couple steps in the related rates problem. Now the third step, take the equation that we have in the problem that, that gives us the graph of this curve, x cubed plus y cubed equals 9 times xy. Use implicit differentiation to take the derivative on both sides of the equation with respect to time t because we want to introduce related rates, x prime and y prime. So x cubed plus y cubed is the left side of the equation. Take the derivative with respect to time t on the left side. And then 9 times xy is the right side of the equation. Take the derivative with respect to t on the right side of the equation. And 9xy is the right side of the equation. So take the derivative with respect to time on the right side of the equation as well. So keep in mind, x is a function of time. y is a function of time. So the derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared times the derivative of the inside function, d dt, and x is the inside function plus the derivative of y cubed, same reason, it's 3y squared, times the derivative of the inside function, so d dt, and y is the inside function. Now on the right side of the equation, you have x is a function of time, y is a function of time, you have to use the product rule to find its derivative with respect to time t. 9 is the coefficient, so keep it on the outside. Now you have parentheses because you have to use the product rule. You have first function stays the same, so x times the derivative of the second function, so d dt of y, plus, because it's the product rule, Second function stays the same, so y times the derivative of the first function, so d dt of x. And so now take all the derivatives. You have 3x squared times the derivative of x with respect to time is x prime, plus 3y squared times the derivative of y with respect to time, that's y prime, equals 9 on the outside, x times y prime, plus y times x prime. So this equation gives us a relationship between x prime and y prime. So now we're ready to actually find out what is x prime. How fast does the x coordinate change when x is 2, when y is 4, and when y prime is negative 3? So substituting the values x equals 2, y equals 4, and y prime is negative 3 into this equation. So 3x squared times x prime plus 3y squared times y prime equals 9 times parentheses xy prime plus y x prime is 3 times 2 squared after you replace the x with a 2 x prime we don't know, but that's what we're trying to find, plus 3 times y squared, so 4 squared, times y prime, negative 3, equals, the right side of the equation is 9 on the outside of the parentheses, x is 2, y prime is negative 3, y is 4, and x prime we don't know. So x prime occurs on the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation. So after you simplify, you'll have this. 12x prime subtract 144 equals negative 54 plus 36x prime. So notice you have an x prime on the left side and you have an x prime on the right side of the equation. Let's make sure that all the x primes are on the same side of the equation because we want to solve for x prime. So let's subtract 12 x prime to the right side of the equation and let's add 54 to the left side of the equation. So when you do that, you'll have negative 90 equals 24 times x prime. Now if you want to get x prime by itself, divide both sides of the equation by 24. So x prime is negative 90 divided by 24, which is equal to negative 3.75 units per second. So what this answer means is that whenever the point on the curve is at 2 comma 4 and the y coordinate is changing at 3 units per second, it's decreasing, the x coordinate is also decreasing by 3.75 units per every second. So this is a good place to stop now that we've talked about related rates and motion problems. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about related rates and business problems.